equations of circles centered at zero zero also called the origin it looks kind of like a little owl here doesn't it or a little face so when we're defining the equation of a circle we're going to uh, develop it by thinking about what we know about the length of a line segment so you know when you have a circle the distance from the center of the circle out to any point on the circle is the same that's when you use a compass or um, I have this handy dandy little fun circle maker that I bought so I could make nice circles for you so if we have the origin here so let's call this this is going to be our x1 y1 and of course it is zero and zero zero on the x-axis zero on the y and if we have some other point out here any point and we call that x2 y2 and we call this length here l or let's call it r because r is the radius or a length of a line segment so if we go back to the formula that we use for the length of a line segment do you remember how to draw that we made that fun little face shape like this and we put in a nose and we put in two eyes and we gave it some eyebrows like this and we said x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so if we have a circle that's centered at the origin oops let me get my pencil off here first and um we call it x2 y2 and we're using 0 0 as the other point and we change the l to an r because that is the radius same thing we'd say the radius is going to be x2 minus 0 squared plus y2 minus 0 squared so minusing 0 that just means x2 so I have the square root of x2 squared plus y2 squared so if I want to um, get rid of this radical sign I'm going to square both sides of the equation remember that a radical is like um, when you take the square root of something it's actually to the half power so the half power squared gives you a 1 and that's why we can square both sides and we'd say r squared is going to be equal to x squared plus y squared so that becomes we usually write it this way though right x squared plus y squared equals r squared that becomes the equation for any circle with a center of 0 0 and in grade 10 Ontario curriculum you don't need to know what happens when you move a circle around although if you're interested you can leave me a little comment and I can do a little a little um, lesson on that as well all it means is you just change these numbers here to the center of your circle so instead of having zero and zero you might have a center at two and three so you'd put in two here and a three no big deal but this is the one that you need to know for grade 10 academic math in Ontario x squared plus y squared equals r squared so now we're going to look at what happens if I have some numbers in here because obviously this is just the formula for it what if I had a point on the circle and let's say I have a circle that has a radius of 5 so right away you should be able to tell me five points on that circle because if this is 0 0 here and it has a radius of 5 then this x coordinate here has to be 5 and of course the y coordinate would be 0 and if I went to the other side here this is going to be minus 5 and 0 so there's two points now if I go straight up the y-axis 5 units this point up here is going to be x is 0 y is 5 and if I go down to this one I would have x is 0 y is minus 5 
So there you go, you've got four points on the circle. Now, what would be the equation for this circle? Well, I know that I'm going to use this formula of x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Let me write it out again. And I know that my radius is 5, so radius equals 5. Now, the biggest mistake that I've seen with students working with circles is they forget that they have to square the r. Right? You need to square this for the equation. So the equation of this circle is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. And you should be able to square. You should be able to know all the squares, perfect squares, up to 100 easily. Right? That's kind of basic calculation stuff. Okay, so there's the equation of my circle. Now if I asked you, find me another point. You've got 4. Can you tell me two perfect squares that add up to 25. And if you thought long and hard about it, you might come up with 4 and 3. So when x is 4, so I'm here, y would be 3. So this point here, 4, 3, x is 4, y is 3, would be on the circle. So I'm going to, and I know that to be true, because when I put in 4 for x and 3 for y, my answer is 25, so that means it's on the circle. So if I have um, 4 and 3 as a point, I can have any other sign of these numbers as well. Now by sign, I mean just like if I went here, I could go x is 4, y is minus 3. Or if I went over to negative 4 and positive 3, so minus 4 and 3, or go down to this one, I could have minus 4 and minus 3. Now the reason they're all going to work with this equation is because I'm squaring them, right? If you square them, then they become positive when you add them together. Now, negative 4 squared is 16 plus negative 3 squared is 9 and that's going to give me 25. So now I have another 4 equation, so I could have had 4 and 3, 4 and minus 3, I could have had minus 4 and 3, and I could have had minus 4 and minus 3. Now, there's another set of numbers that you can make with these as well, and that would be if I picked 3 and 4. Still, 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to give me 25, and that's going to give me all these points. So 3, 3 and 4, I could have negative 3 and 4, I could have 3 and negative 4, and I could have minus 3 and minus 4. So now I have 4, 8, 12 numbers or uh, coordinates on this single circle. Now it's not always that easy because finding two numbers whose squares, uh, perfect squares, add up to another perfect square, it's not so easy to find those. But you get the idea of why this all works. So let's take a look at some of the questions you might be asked. What is the radius of each of these circles? So when you go to do a question on a test, write out the equation that you know. And sometimes teachers even give you this equation. I wouldn't. That would, I mean, this is a pretty simple equation. You square the x, you square the y's, you got the r squared. So if this is x squared and this is y squared and this is r squared, what is r equal to? Well, r is going to be equal to the square root of 4, and that would be 2. And what is the square root of 49? Because it's already in this format, right? I've got the x squared, y squared, and all I need to know is that this is r squared. So r was going to be 7 for this one, and r would be the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? We've got this figured out x squared plus y squared equals r squared. No excuse for not getting a good mark on this unit test. Okay, so now let's take a look at something a little different. And it says that the equation of a circle that passes through 1, 3, find the equation of a circle passing through 1, 3 centered on the origin. So this is important that it says this 
and all the ones in grade 10 academic should say that unless your teacher is giving you some sort of extension question which isn't part of the curriculum okay so it passes through one three anytime you see equation of a circle write out the equation of a circle you know that and it might even get you a mark from your teacher and say oh yeah they know the equation of a circle and it passes through one three well one is my x and three is my y right so i want the equation of this of the circle and i want it to look like x squared plus y squared equals something i'm just trying to find this find r squared and how can i do that well i'm going to plug in what x and y are and i'm going to find out what r squared is so i'm going to put in one squared plus three squared equals r squared so one squared is one three squared is nine and that tells me that r squared is going to be equal to 10. now don't make the mistake of taking the square root of this and putting in some crazy number here right this is r squared that's r squared right there so all you have to do is plug this 10 back in for your r squared and you have the equation so x squared plus y squared equals 10 is the equation of the circle passing through 1 3 i'm not going to write all that up okay so what about if i give you another point good practice one two seven is a point on the circle give its equation well the equation of the circle right again you write out the equation for a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared you have x and y right here x is two y is seven plug them in you'll get your r squared and again remember not to take the square root this time because you don't need to you're not asked for r you're asked for r squared so 2 squared is 4 and 7 squared is 49 and 49 and 4 is 53 and so x squared plus y squared equals 53 is the equation of the circle okay now we've got that figured out let's move on what is the diameter the diameter of a circle diameter remember is a distance all the way across so from here to here and the diameter is two radiuses right 2r equals d because the radius the diameter goes all the way so that's 1r plus 1r is 2r's so the diameter is 20 what is the equation of the circle well if 2r equals d and in this case 2r is equal to 20 so that means my radius is going to be half of the diameter which is 10. the equation of the circle now i'm going to have to square that r right because i only have the r value I don't have r squared like i had up here don't make that mistake so x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 squared don't leave it like that your job is to find this number is uh, sure it's 10 squared but you can square 10 10 times 10 10 times you've got a hundred pennies 100. okay another little skill you're often asked is to determine if a point is inside outside or on a circle so if i gave you this circle here and it shows that it has a radius of two right from here to here is two two so that means in order for me to determine if one 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 i don't know where it's going to be if this is on the circle it has to satisfy the equation of the circle and i don't have the equation right i just have a picture so what is the equation of this circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared if you write this out every time you do a homework question you don't need your teacher to give you the equations you will know it the radius is two from here to here so x squared plus y squared equals four 
is the equation of this circle. All the points on this circle have to be satisfied by this equation. But if I put in 1 here, so if I do 1, 1, that's going to give me 1 squared plus 1 squared is not equal to 4. It's only 2. So that means 1, 1 is going to be, it's less, so this is 2, right? 2 is less than 4. So 1, 1 is inside the circle. It's going to be about here. Now, sometimes they're not so easy to, to see. I mean, that was pretty obvious. I think you could tell if you had, a, if you had the equation or the, the sketch of the circle that 1, 1 would be inside. And that's just another way of checking it, right? Okay, so this one gives you the circle x squared plus y squared equals 36. Is 6, 0 on the circle, inside or outside? Well, I know and you know that r is equal to 6. So the point 6, 0 has to be on the circle because that is the radius. And you can check it out by plugging in 6 squared plus 0 squared equals 36. And that is true. So yeah, this one is on the circle. How about 5 and 2? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1, 2. Mm, it could be close, but I would guess it's probably inside. But we're going to check. 5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to, that's 25 plus 4 is 29. And 29 is less than 36. So it's going to be inside. And finally, the point 4, 5. Well, 4 squared plus 5 squared is equal to 16 plus 25. 25, 35, and 6 is 41. And 41 is greater than 36. Therefore, outside. Those are nice, easy questions. And hopefully your teacher gives you lots of those on your test. So 4, 5 is going to be like up there somewhere. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to talk about a couple of um, calculations that they often ask you to do regarding chords of circles and a word problem, and that will finish it up. What is the chord of a circle? The chord. So when you have a circle, I'm going to go back to this one here. If we have this circle, a chord is a line that joins two points on a circle. It could be any two points like that. It could be from here to here. That would also be a chord. Now, a secant of a circle is just the line that goes all the way through. And you're going to use secants a lot in calculus. So they bring up the term secant is really a line. You see the secant line or the secant and the chord is just within the boundaries of the circle. So from one side of the circle to another. And so this question says graph x squared plus y squared equals 100. No, I didn't draw it. Okay, so let's draw, let's draw that circle quickly. So I'm going to use my fancy dancy circle drawer. Maybe you have a compass, you line up the axes and you draw your circle. Isn't that fun? It was worth the uh, two dollars or whatever I paid for it. Okay, graph x squared plus y squared equals 10. Okay, so I've drawn a circle. Doesn't matter how big it is, but I know how this these points here are going to be. I know what they are. Can you tell me what they are? I'm listening. Yell it loud. Okay, so this is the radius squared, right? R squared. R squared equals 100, so R is equal to 10. Okay, it's actually plus or minus. So we go here. This is 10, 10 and 0. This is minus 10 and 0. This is 0 and 10. See, so once you've got that radius, you can tell me four points. Easy, easy. 
show that P minus 6, 8 and Q, 6, 8 are on the circle. Okay, minus 6 and 8. Okay, so minus 6 and 8. And they want me to show that they are that this point is on the circle, minus 6, 8. How do I know if it's on the circle? Well, we just did that, didn't we? Um, and 6 and 8, so 6, 8 is going to be about here. Just guessing, right? doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so how do I show that minus 6, 8 and 6, 8 are on the circle? Well, that means that minus 6 squared plus 8 squared has to be 100. It has to be equal. Left side equals right side. When I substitute this in, that means that it is satisfying the equation. Satisfying the equation means making it happy. It also means making it equal. So minus 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to 100. And of course it is. 36 plus 64 equals 100. So it doesn't matter if I'm squaring a negative or a positive value. When you square a negative, you get a positive. When you square a positive, you get a positive. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is also equal to 100. So that's showing algebraically that I've proven that these points are on the circle. Minus 6, 8 and 6, 8 are on the circle. Okay, step one, done. Or actually, it's two, because we graphed it, we proved they're on the circle. What is the equation of the right bisector? Sometimes you'll see that terminology of a right bisector. Right just is referring to a right angle, the right angle, or a perpendicular bisector, which we've already looked at in um, analytic geometry. So what is the equation of the right bisector? So the bisector... I have to put this the right way because it's got these little knobbies on it. So here's my chord. My chord. Right here. That's a chord. So what is the right bisector of PQ? So I need to know to bisect means to divide in two. Right? Into two pieces. Equal. Bisect. Equally. Sharing that last piece of pie. Okay, so what is this point right here? Halfway in between. What is the midpoint? And we call this, this was P and this was Q. So the midpoint of PQ is going to be minus 6 plus 6 divided by 2. Big bracket here, right? You're doing X and Y coordinates. And 8 plus 8 divided by 2. And that's going to give me 0 and 8. So 0, 8 is this point right here. And what is the equation of the right bisector? Well, if this has 0 slope, this is just a horizontal line, and right? it's horizontal. So this bisector, the equation of this, of uh, well, that's not the bisector, but the equation of PQ PQ would give me Y is equal to 8, right? All the Y's on this line have a height of 8. So 0, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, 4, 8, 5, 8, 6, 8, and same the other way. Y equals 8 is the horizontal line. And, of course, this has 0 slope, right? 0 slope. So if I went to do the... Um, asked you what is the slope of the perpendicular bisector if slope is equal to zero the negative reciprocal of zero is undefined negative reciprocal is undefined we have undefined slope so you can't measure this slope right it's it's up straight up and down in other words you can't you can't rollerblade straight up into the air. This has zero slope. So this line, the perpendicular bisector, I'm just going to make a dotted line. That's what it's going to be. So make this perpendicular. This is going to be a vertical line. Vertical line is going to be, what is the equation of the y-axis? 
help you say y equals, um, sorry, x equals 0. x equals 0. All the x's on this line are 0. That's how I always check, because sometimes you get mixed up, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5. So all the x's are 0. So this is the equation of the right bisector, x equals 0. Show that it passes through the origin. Well, I can show you that goes through the origin because when x is 0, y is 0 as well. So yes, it's a vertical line and it does pass through the origin. Now, another thing you may be asked at some point when you're doing your homework is prove that all perpendicular bisectors of a chord will pass through the origin. And that's not so hard to do because if you take a look at any other chord, so let's say I made a chord from, from here to here, like that. And if I found the midpoint of these two points, so let's say that's um, minus 10 and 0 and 6 and 8. What is the midpoint? The midpoint here would be minus 10 plus 6 is minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2 and 4. Minus 2 and 4. So it's going to be right here. And then you could find the slope of this line, find the negative reciprocal, and you'll see that all of these perpendicular bisectors are always going to pass through the origin, no matter where you go. And you can try a couple of different ones. Um, let's do one that's kind of going, let's do one that's going this way. So let's say this is my chord here. And halfway through the chord would be about here and perpendicular to, look at that, eh? There's a perpendicular, it's going to go through here as well. So one of the characteristics of circles and chords is that the perpendicular bisector of all chords pass through the origin. That's a very important little characteristic for you. Okay, so finally, yes, we're getting to a word problem. Um, and you'll see different variations on this kind of question. There's lots of them. There's a you know, like a frog and jumping on a lily pad and a ripple goes out. But this one is a ship. A ship drops its anchor and creates a circular ripple whose radius increases at 50 centimeters per second. Okay, so I drew a little picture of it on the back here because I realized it was running out of room. But this is basically what's happening, right? You've got a, um, the anchor drops in here and the ripple goes out like this as it goes out further and further. And you've seen this before, playing in the bathtub or wherever, in the dishwasher, dishwater. Okay, so it's the radius increases at 50 centimeters per second. Find an equation for the circle 10 seconds after the anchor is dropped. Well, tell me right now what it would be one second after. The radius increases at 50 centimeters per second. So that means that after one second, the radius would be 50, right? The radius would be 50, and that would be x squared plus y squared equals 50 squared. So if you if you take out your trusty calculator and you, let's clear this, you go 50 squared, you'd say x squared plus y squared equals 2,500. But that's not what we were asked, but I wanted you to see that because I knew you would know this one after one second. So find the equation after 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, how far has this radius gone? So it's going 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters every second. So after 10 seconds, I'm out 50 times 10. So distance times time, right? Oh, sorry, this is a rate. The rate times the time. So 50 per second times 10 seconds, that's going to give me 500 centimeters after 10 seconds. So 500 centimeters. So after, let's write this out, after 10 seconds, the radius is going to be 50 times 10, which is 500. 
So that means that x squared plus y squared is going to be 500 squared. And what's 500 squared? Oh my goodness, that's a big number. 500 squared is 250,000. So x squared plus y squared equals 250,000. Now remember, these were in centimeters per second. Always be careful with your units. So second part of the question says a small rowboat is 50 meters, meters. Oh, look at that. I try to fool you. Centimeters, meters, and 75 meters north of the anchor. How long does it take for the ripple to reach the rowboat? Okay, so I'm going to flip over here. So 50 meters east and 75 meters north. So let's go here. Let's go 50 meters. So let's say this is 50 meters right here. 50 meters east and 75 meters north. So this is going to have coordinates of minus 50 and 75. Right? Remember though that this is an absolute value. Right? So here's my... Here's my coordinate. If I put it on a coordinate plane, the east would... Oh, I went west, didn't I? <laughs> okay, let's go the other way. 50 meters east and 75 meters north. Oh, now they're both positive. How lovely is that? Okay, we went west. East, west, north, south. Just like a compass. So 50 meters east and 75 meters north. Okay, so how long is this line here? Well, you know how to find length of a line segment, don't you? You smarties. Whoops, I was way off the page. Sorry about that. So 50 and 75, it always looks like it's not that far away. Okay, so the length is going to be the square root of... This is 0, 0 here, right? So that's nice. So I'm just doing 50 minus 0 don't have to put those minuses in. Now remember your little face, right? I'm not going to do that for you this time. I think you got it. Zero squared. Okay, so I'm going to do 50 squared. We already did that. That was 2,500. So I've got 2,500 here. And I'm going to add 75 squared, which is 5,625. And that's going to give me, add them together, 2,500, add that to, I get 8,125, square root of 8,125. Why do I want to know the length of this? I'm not trying to find the equation of a circle here. I just want to know how long is it going to take for this to get out to here. So it's really a distance question, right? So square root of 8,125, second square root, second answer gives me... 90.1387, I'll leave that, there's more decimals, approximately, and this is meters, right, meters, so I want to know, I know my speed in centimeters, so how many centimeters is 900 meters, or 90 meters, or 100 centimeters to a meter, so I'm going to move the decimal over two places. That's going to give me 9013.9, rounding up to one decimal, centimeters. Okay, so if my, my circle is expanding at 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters per second, how many seconds to go this far? So if I said, how many seconds to go 100? If it was 100 centimeters, how long would it take? And you'd say, oh, 100 divided by 50, that's two seconds. So what we're doing here is we're going to divide, right? Centimeters divided by centimeters per second is going to give me seconds. So it's because it's like this, right? Centimeters divided by centimeters per second. Why am I doing these numbers? And if I divide by a fraction, I invert and multiply. So times second over centimeters, those cancel out and I'm going to get time. That's what I want. So 91, 3.9 divided by 50. 
Okay, I'm going to divide that by 50 over here on the side on my lovely pink calculator. And I'll bring it over here so you can see how beautiful it is. That gives me, um, oh, I forgot to change it to um, centimeters first. Let's do it again. 9013.9, so that's centimeters because it was in meters. And I divide by meters or centimeters per second and I get um, 180.3, approximately 180.3 seconds. That's how long it's going to take. Well, you could get really smart and say, well, there's 60 seconds in a minute. Or approximately, what do we get here? Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes before it hits the rowboat. Okay, so that's kind of what you're going to need to be able to do with um, circles. Pretty easy stuff. Inside, outside, upside down on the circle. A couple of ripples flying around here and there. And maybe a chord. And that's it for today. Hope you found the lesson helpful. Please subscribe to support the channel. Tell your friends. Share the lesson. Make everybody smart like you. Bye for now.